Latour, born in 1947, uh, was two years older. I use the past tense because Latour died recently. Descola is still alive and very active. Well, considering that his teacher and supervisor of his PhD thesis was Claude Lévi-Strauss, who lived to be 101 years old when he died. What is the perception of them outside the discipline of anthropology and outside France? Latour is much better known and more influential internationally, which is mainly due to the fact that he was active in a whole range of disciplines, not only in anthropology, but also sociology and philosophy. He was himself very much part of the field of science and technology studies, and also of the anthropology and even sociology of science. His visibility was increased by his bent for the polemics that resulted in a number of controversial and provocative statements directed at all sides. The attacks on him and the polemics with him, especially at the beginning, stem, stemmed from misunderstanding of his theories, and this problem continues up to this day. Uh, and uh, especially his insights into the social nature of scientific facts, which so infuriate American physicists and other hard scientists there that they even blocked his appointment at the Princeton University. This does not mean, however, that the scholar who is almost, ex who is almost existentially linked to French anthropology as holder of a prestigious chair at the Collège de France and as a former director of the Parisian Laboratory of Social Anthropology, uh, he inherited both posts from Levi Strauss, has been deprived of influence outside France and outside anthropology. On the contrary, despite his strong commitment to anthropology, he too has a very broad approach and is well versed in a range of other disciplines, which is why he is known to others than anthropologists more recently philosophers are also beginning to discover him. Uh, let, let me tell now a few things about Latour, Bruno Latour. Uh, Latour's and Descola's intellectual, intellectual affiliations are quite different. Latour began his research career as a sociologist of science at the Salk Institutes in San Diego in California where he and the American sociologist Steve Wolger ethnographically studied the laboratory construction of scientific facts. And soon after, afterwards with another French sociologist of science, Michel Callon, and some other, and some other people developed the famous actor network theory or ANT theory, uh, which became quite famous and is often equated uh, with Latour Tukur. After that, he carried uh, anthropological fieldwork in Abidjan. Uh, he, but he didn't study philosophy. He studied, uh, uh, I mean, at the undergraduate level, he, level, he studied philosophy. And uh, as a PhD student, he did his doctorate in theology, actually. The scholar's career, by contrast, has been completely straightforward and regular. It has led through anthropological studies and through doctoral fieldwork in the Amazonian rainforest, and from there to the Parisian anthropological institutions, where he has been based ever since. While Latour seems to have identified most with the field of uh, science, technology, uh, science and technology studies, the scholar's field is named Anthropology of Nature. This is the name of the chair at the Collège de France that he inherited from Lévi-Strauss. Uh, he has not changed its name, although he rejects the notion of nature, and so that he's not perfectly happy with the name of his chair. Uh, he prefers labels such as living non-humans instead of nature. Uh, and this also applies to Latour. Both of them think that nature is a rather useless foggy, contract, uh, foggy construct today, and that it does not exist as a universal external reality that all cultures are confronted with. Nature as a world separate from human beings does not exist. That's 
That's something that both the scholar and Latour entirely agree. For all the career differences, and we could list many more of them, and despite their different intellectual genealogies, there was a high degree of agreement between them. This is particularly, particularly evident in the 2015 interview in Paris, the, the, this one, you can take a look at it at, uh, on YouTube. Descola took from Latour the concepts of symmetrical anthropology, uh, then the concept of collective, and also the, the very pair of humans, non-humans, which, which was itself originally Latour's. Latour, in turn, was impressed by Descola's version, version of the ontological turn, uh, which is, by the way, much more interesting and productive than the version produced by the anthropologists from Cambridge. Latour called this version a real bombshell in anthropological theory. Uh, uh, just a word of what, uh, what the notion of collective means to Latour and, uh, and uh, the Scola. Collective refers to the associations of humans and non-humans. Uh, a, collect, a, a collective, which is a rassemblement, as it's called in French, a collect, something that is collected, uh, something that is sabre, no? also the word sabre uh, is uh, a parliament, a thing in, 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 in German language is, is, uh, is having the same etymology. Uh, that means that the, a collective as a, as a resemblement of the humans and non-humans, so that's, that's essential. Not only humans, but also non-humans. That's the main point. And consequently, also Latour's principle of symmetry uh, from where uh, 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 symmetrical anthropology is derived uh, requires that we treat humans in the same way as non-humans. This principle is already present in actor network, the network theory which explicitly equated the status of humans and non-humans. Objects do have agency. Anything that modifies a state of affairs acts. Things, however, do not become actors, but actants. So there is a, a slight difference between actor and actant. An actor takes action. An actant puts action in motion. A speed bump, for example, make makes a driver slow down and is thus an actant. Actor network theory extended the study of social interactions also to all non-humans uh, who are to be treated equally with humans and animals are of course among these non-humans. All non-humans have to be equally included in the scientific as well as, well as in political consideration. All non-humans are invited into science, as it were, and all are invited into, as Latour labeled it, the parliament of things. So that's uh, obviously a political notion. Instead of being left in apartheid. So oh, here you can read uh, his, uh, his idea that uh, uh, social sciences, he uses, he, here he uses the, the term hermeneutics, are working hard or were working hard to separate out humans and objects, to separate humans from no, from no humans, from objects, including, including animals. Uh, and uh, he claims that uh, this, uh, that this uh, effort to, to keep them out uh, resulted in a most blatant apartheid, which claims that, no, that non-humans are not allowed in our science. And then there is another passage from him uh, where he uh, uh, touches the the problem of anthropomorphism that is this is an issue which is uh, uh, 
everybody who, who has to do with animals, who studies animals and their relations with humans, uh, has to do with this notion. It is impossible to avoid it. And here, um, Latour Scholl actually uh, admonishes that uh, there is a kind of uh, moving between two, uh, two extremes. One extreme is the animating beings, uh, the animating human, non humans, the animating animals, for example. This is what natural scientists, the biologists who claim that, uh, that, uh, that we cannot say nothing, we cannot uh, say nothing uh, about animals except uh, those knowledge that is produced in the laboratory, for example. All the rest is anthropomor anthropomorphism. All the rest is uh, is uh, is a guess, is a projection of our feelings, of our empathy onto the onto the animals. And on the other extreme, overestimating, uh, I mean, over over animating animals, which is the attitude, of course, of lovers of animals and, and advocates of animals, etc. Uh, and uh, theoretically, of course, uh, uh, the notion that uh, we should uh, we should be silent about animals, and that only uh, zoologists or ethologists are entitled to talk about animals is, of course, questioned very much in social sciences today, especially in this in this field, in this kind of studies. Uh, let's have a closer look now at uh, another one, at Philippe Descola. Among the many books he has written is one titled Par de la nature et culture, Beyond Nature and Culture, published in 2005. This is, I think, the most important and grad groundbreaking work he produced. Produced, it introduces Descola's now famous four ontologies or four fundamental modes of identification, which he calls animism, totemism, analogism, and naturalism. Descola rejected the Levi Strauss's thesis of the universality of the nature versus culture opposition. Descola thinks that this opposition is by no means universal. It is known only to naturalistic ontology, which happens to be our ontology and has no meaning or is even unknown to the other three ontologies. Only we, only a naturalist conceive nature as an external human independent reality. That therefore this conception is far from being universal. This class refutation of the, of the Levi-Straussian dichotomy of nature and culture was not a matter of transcending binary thinking, but of discovering a distinction that he believed to be more universal or possibly universal than the Levi-Straussian distinction of nature and culture. And this distinction, this new distinction that uh, the Scola proposes as a possibly universal distinction is a distinction between physicality or corporeality, this is material processes, on one hand, and interiority mental states on the other hand, on the other side. Humans can use this universal distinction to emphasize or minimize the continuity or discontinuity between themselves and non-humans. In doing so, four possible combinations, four systems, four ways of identifying continuities and discontinuities between human and non-human beings are available to them. Animism, for example, is based on the idea of a continuous, continuous interiority. This is Sauls, for example. And the, this continuous exteriority, these are bodies. Naturalism in reverse postulates the continuity of bodies, that is physicality, nature. We, we think that uh, all, all living bodies, all living beings have the same kind of bodies uh, regulated by the same laws of physics, chemistry, etc. But we believe in the discontinuity of interiority. Uh, 
actually we reserve interiority as uh, only for human beings and deny it to, to non-humans, which is not the case in animism, of course. Descolata has developed a comparative anthropology of the relations between humans and non-humans. Ontologies differ in where people draw the line between humans and non-humans. They differ in where they see continuity and where they see discontinuity. Uh, Descola has also put all these ontologies on the map. He has identified them regionally, for example, the regions of animism, uh, Amazonia, Papua New Guinea, S Siberia, etc. Our end of the world is naturalistic, Australia is totemistic, South America is anal analogistic, etc. <clears throat> et However, his scheme is not culturally deterministic to be certain. Naturalism, for example, is the dominant ontology in the West today, as the scholar claims, but this does not mean that every individual is successfully socialized as a naturalist. Some people, these are often artists, avoid the dominant the identification. In a way, they escape it. Children often have not yet become naturalists. They have not yet excluded non-humans or animals from their conception of society. As this school notebook show, shows. You see here that, uh, that teacher educates little future naturalists with a red pencil when he, when he thinks they do a mistake, mistaken including animals into this into this collective, they have to, he has to apply red pencil. Of course, naturalists are also hospitable to you know, humans, not, not only children, but also enemies within their, within their animistic ontology. So we, 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 we could talk about a certain kind of hospitality, the hospitality of including non-humans, including animals, plants and all the rest into our notions, into our conception, into our science, into our society, not excluding them. And uh, as the scholar argues, uh, this inclusion of non-human animals represents a major advance in science today. A major advance, but also a hope for survival of this planet. Here we meet his uh, ecological or environmentalist dimension. Anthropology will not survive if it clings only to its anthropos and continues to exclude non-humans. Here we see that he that he, that he uh, gives as examples not only animals but also uh, plants uh, uh, and things, inanimate things like electronic adversary, like chess, etc. <clears throat> this book has been very uh, just. Uh, I leave, I give you another minute to read that passage. This is that here is here this uh, environmentalist dilemma is uh, is presented. Anthropology of culture cannot uh, survive if it does not extend itself toward anthropology of nature. Although as we, as we have mentioned, uh, these, these terms culture, nature are used only conditionally. He does not accept the notion of nature. Actually, he, he, uh, 
he argues that uh, the notion of nature is a useless notion today. That's why that's why there we uh, that's why we are talking about non-humans, for example. This book, as you can see, has been quite influential. It is translated in a, a row of languages, which shows that which probably shows uh, how important that uh, that there is a perception of its uh, huge importance. Uh, it is clear from above that the scholar is an, also an environmental or ecological thinker, uh, just like Latour. Both have written a series of books with an explicitly ecological orientation. There are, here are some of them. I'm not sure now how many minutes do I still have. I will. Um, I yes. No, no. Uh, please, uh, you have uh, 15 minutes uh, for uh, your lecture. And uh, then uh, we have uh, 15 minutes uh, for discussion. You have uh, uh, 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. I will I will manage to do it. Uh, now I will refer to the uh, to this uh, to the to the intellectual background of both Latour and uh, Descola, which is a French ethnoecology, as I told you. But uh, uh, and I will limit my I will limit myself to the to the most important to the most interesting and. Uh, fascinating founder of this tradition, which is André Audricourt. So oh, that's the guy. And that's uh, the book. So that's an edited volume published in, uh, published in 1989. Uh, the articles uh, have been had been published before in various journals. And among these articles, there is one especially important, which is titled La, uh, La Technologie Science Humaine, which is, uh, that is uh, technology as uh, human sciences. Uh, and there is one even more influential article uh, titled Do Domestication of Animals, Cultivation of Plants and the Treatment of Other Humans. In French, it is traitement d'autrui, the treatment of the other. But uh, this other could be uh, misleading. It could, it, it, so I, I, I think it's better to translate it as other humans. And, and this is, uh, it, in this article, Audrey Kuhl formulated his central thesis, which has been extremely seminal and influential. Uh, this is the thesis of the correspondences between the treatment of domestic animals, cultivated plants, and, and the treatment of other humans. In a way that uh, the same way as we treat animals and plants, we also treat other humans. For instance, if we practice castration, if we practice castration of animal males and human males, uh, uh, actually, uh, or to better to put it, if we castrate animal males, we will probably castrate uh, human males also. Obviously, this does not apply in an absolute way. We, uh, uh, we, we know the practice of castrating animals, but uh, we are horrified by the idea of castration castrating human males, but uh, the idea is not, uh, is not strange, is not unknown to us. And there are, or there have been civilization that were practicing, that were practicing, that were applying this practice. And our nearest case, for example, was the Ottoman Empire, which, have, which has a practice of uh, these court castrates, etc. Uh, uh, Audrey Kuhl was also uh, ethnobotanist, among other things. 
that's his most uh, most famous work. He was cultural technologist, uh, writing a book on on the man and the plow. He was also ethnolinguist. Yeah, this is also ethnolinguistic, ethno, both ethnolinguistic and ethnobotanic books. So it, uh, you can see that uh, he was a kind of founder of this field of ethnoecology, being active in all these subdisciplines. Uh, why is uh, he so important? Possibly because of his uh, of his central thesis that I mentioned, and uh, this thesis has often been referred to by both our anthropologists, both by the Scola and Latour. Uh, the thing is, however, that uh, neither the Scola nor Latour uh, originated direct from this uh, tradition, from this school uh, founded by uh, Autricourt, because, uh, because the Scola was, uh, was uh, Lévi-Strauss' student, and that, that was a different tribe. As some say, they, there were two anthropological tribes in the Paris of the aftermath of the Second World War. One was Lévi-Straussian tribe, these were more symbolic anthropologists. They were interested in animals as good for thinking. And then there was this one more uh, materialist tribe interested in, 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 in work, in, in technological processes, in material things. They were also uh, influenced by Marxism, if not, uh, if not outrightly Marxists. So there was a clear difference between them and, uh, and the students would be somewhat, uh, some would choose Lévi-Strauss, other would, would, would choose Audrey Cour and Le Gourin. So they were behaving like two tribes, uh, not very uh, gentle towards each other, etc. cetera. But uh, uh, Descola as a, as a, as a, as a student, coming from the Lévi-Straussian tribe managed to trespass the borders of these intertribal divisions and jealousies and successfully combined both approaches. Hence, he also managed to become the leading proponent of the French ethnoecology at the beginning of, of our, of the 21st century. And Descola admits that he really he, this famous Audrey Kurs article innumerable, innumerable times. Influence logical development. was perhaps even more important for his development than Lévi-Strauss. Reading, uh, reading this book, Beyond Nature and Culture, one certainly can get this impression that he, in a way, interrelated the two tribes and that he, he is actually closer to the, to the Audrey Kurz tribe than Lévi-Strauss and tribe. He is a He's an inheritor of Levi Strauss and his prestigious chairs and institutions, but he is also or he also radically overturned his uh, his central thesis of, of this universal opposition of nature and culture, as you see. So that's that's what I wanted to tell you uh, to present uh, in in forty five minutes. Uh, a, a certain tradition and certain approaches that are related to this tradition, which represents a kind of background to them, but which but that they are simultaneously a different ways, a different iterations out of this tradition. So thank you for attention, and I hope we have some discussion as well. Mm -hmm. uh Uh, so, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Basker, uh, for your uh, 
very uh, interesting uh, uh, lecture uh, to uh, especially for uh, Macedonian uh, environment, uh, scientific uh, uh, environment, uh, because uh, 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 all of your uh, uh, perspectives that you have presented in your lecture uh, are very uh, important uh, for the uh, recent uh, approaching uh, uh, the new uh, theoretical and uh, methodological uh, position in the uh, science of uh, folklore studies, uh, ethnology, uh, uh, so-called uh, eco-ethnology, uh, or uh, environmental um, anthropology, uh, which became from uh, uh, cultural uh, ecology. And uh, 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 what uh, you gave us uh, one uh, um, very impressive uh, um, landscape. What happened to these uh, subdisciplines uh, uh, in order to have uh, our students and our uh, researcher uh, position uh, and uh, uh, possibilities uh, to have a, a new uh, view of interpreting, uh, reinterpretation of uh, uh, archaic uh, um, folk items uh, uh, because uh, some of our students have uh, uh, still uh, using the Levi-Strauss uh, um, binary position. So uh, this fluidity uh, is uh, one of uh, some uh, uh, new perspective uh, to, be, to, uh, to give a new uh, point of view uh, in the so-called uh, Bruno Latour uh, process of uh, 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 nature culture. Yes. Uh, so do you have any questions from Professor? Uh, does anybody have uh, some questions from uh, hmm, our participant? Uh, uh, so uh, may, may I uh, ask you, uh, dear Professor, uh, what do you mean? Uh, is it possible? Uh, to uh, accepting uh, one uh, uh, the, the, to accepting the ontological turn uh, perspective in researching if uh, somebody doesn't uh, uh, feel uh, this uh, um, perception in uh, his interiority I mean if somebody uh, uh, feels uh, on the stage of uh, <laughs> Uh, binary opposition. Uh, is there any possibility to uh, to develop uh, his uh, uh, mind uh, to <laughs> to receive uh, this point of view? Uh, it is especially uh, important uh, with uh, 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 with our um, uh, interpretation of the um, sacrificial uh, um, motives in our. Uh, for teachers, we know all of us know that uh, the uh, sacrifice, uh, the motive of sacri sacrificing, is something which is very uh, uh, sacred uh, in the Excuse term me. of uh, what sacrificing? Uh, the sacrificing of the human sacrificing and the animal. Uh, oh. uh, uh, still, have a, a, a very monumental value. Uh, what uh, about the empathy? Uh, uh, here in uh, uh, our um, uh, on our level of uh, investigation, there are still uh, a little bit uh, less of uh, 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 empathy uh, to the non-human uh, beings. So uh, we have to work uh, to uh, appreciate to uh, receive this ontological term uh, uh, habitus. If I can say something like that. So uh, uh, your presentation was very uh, important for uh, our uh, new uh, uh, way of uh, investing, uh, of researching our uh, archaic folk items. Uh, so uh, from my point of view, it, uh, I think that it's very uh, important the. Uh, Bruno Latour's uh, um, conception, concept of a uh, uh, nature uh, culture 
uh, phenomenon uh, that we are not uh, finished with our process of uh, cultivation. Mm. Uh, is that all what you wanted to say? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure that I uh, that I understood well everything. Uh, mm -hmm. you, okay. uh, you touched the issue of uh, sacrifice and of empathy, and um, regarding uh, empathy, uh, uh, there are uh, some interesting historians of animals um, that. Uh, that uh, that also comment on kind of of, of a growing uh, of a growing sentiment of empathy that that basically mostly refers on to to Europe and to the West and uh, to the to the changing attitudes towards animals uh, in in the West or in Europe. Uh, there is I, I would I especially I have in mind especially two. Uh, Two historic books. Uh, I try if I try to uh, to share to show you to show them. Uh, do you see? So there is one. Uh, there is one. Uh, one English and one uh, French book. Uh, that one uh, by Keith Thomas. Uh, that they were both published in the beginnings of the 1980s, and I think that, that this is an important date in 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 the, in, in this process of uh, of building uh, empathy and building uh, interest. Actually, building the the the, the animal term itself, uh, because uh, in the 90s, in, I mean in the 1970s, the situation was still very different from what followed from the 1980s onwards. So in a way, these books were two milestones in uh, in animal studies uh, or in uh, human non-human relation studies in general. That this one is uh, is not dealing uh, specifically with animals, but it has much to say about animals. And interestingly, very interestingly, uh, Keith Thomas, historian, uh, refers several times to this Audrey Kurs thesis of the correspondence between treating animals, treating plants, and treating other humans, which is rather unusual uh, since Audrey Kur, uh, the, the reception of uh, Audrey Kur has been very limited even in France, not to say outside France. But uh, Keith Thomas was. Uh, was knowledgeable of, of Audrey Kuhl and he obviously read his things, not only that articles, but also the rest. And uh, he was clearly influenced by him. Uh, the, the book is dealing with, uh, as you see, the history of the modern sensibility. So sensibility for, for the non-humans, especially for the animals, uh, the growing empathy for animals is a kind of uh, development of the modern sensibility. sensibility. Uh, the, other, the other history, the French one by Robert Delors, uh, is titled Animals Have History, and he's more uh, histor historically minded in, in, the, in the way of French historians. So uh, for him, it was not uh, essential saying animals have uh, agency, this is more Anglo-Saxon idea. For him, it was more important to claim animals have history. But uh, uh, in the end, perhaps the two claims come together, result in the same. So that's, uh, these are two very important books and, uh, and uh, both actually were aware that we are now in, a, in, a, in an age, in a period where this empathy for the animals is growing. Uh, if I uh, if I may just uh, return uh, shortly to to the issue of uh, of animal sacrifice and even uh, human sacrifice, uh, in uh, roughly the same time there was a kind of turn uh, this in in the in the discipline of classical uh, scholarship or classical philology as we call it in France again when. Uh, Marcel Détienne, who was one of the leading French uh, classical scholars, 
uh, together with uh, Vernin, developed uh, an alternative vision of, uh, of animal sacrifice in ancient Greece. Both, both were scholars of Greece. And uh, they actually uh, rejected the, the previously dominant uh, notion of animal sacrifice, uh, which was advocated by different people who were perhaps, at least some of them were also classical scholars, but who were also uh, to some extent ethologists, kind of natural scientists. And et ethology is that science of animal behavior, uh, ethology uh, makes pride of uh, being uh, of being free of, of these stupid uh, anthropomorphic uh, notions and views, etc. And uh, their view of animal sacrifice was extremely, of course, extremely lacking any uh, empathy, and uh, it was also. Subsequently, it was also incapable of seeing an empathy towards animals in the societies themselves, the societies that practiced human or, or, or animal sacrifice, like Greece. Uh, while the Tien showed that uh, the Tien and Vernant then tried to show that um, although they were sacrificing animals, they were not lacking empathy towards, for example, towards the cattle or towards the pigs they would sacrifice, that they would immolate on the altar, etc. Uh, similarly, as for example, our peasants, when they kill the pig, uh, do not lack empathy. The families, the grow, families raising pigs may, 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 have uh, very empathetic attitudes towards pig. Kids love them. There is a kind of relationship between them, but they are aware that the day will come that when they will have to kill this pig. So empathy is a bit more complicated phenomenon than, than these people imagined. Um, so that the, so this new new uh, this new alternative theory of animal uh, sacrifice came as a kind of subversion of this ethological also uh, ethological uh, view which is lacking any empathy etc. So empathy that would mean that of course that empathy is uh, is is not is not something recent. It is not our invention. European invention, as we love to to, to imagine, uh, difference. Many civilizations were empathic. Virtually all of them were empath were empathic, empathetic, and all had uh, also uh, they they for considered, for example, the the case of vegetarianism. Vegetarianism is also often related to, to different civilization, to different religions, etc. And it is it also has some connection with with empathy. So things are much more are much more complex than some people imagine. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Baskar, for your enormous uh, uh, interpretation and. Uh, uh, giving us uh, the a new uh, viewpoint of uh, uh, the uh, this uh, uh, subspecific uh, uh, area of uh, researching so uh, we uh, uh, end with uh, the first uh, uh, guest lecture uh, professor Baskar uh, can we um, make uh, some uh, uh, if uh, our students have uh, interested in the, your uh, research area. Uh, can uh, we uh, contact with you? I, I believe we can uh, uh, develop a mutual uh, uh, communication and uh, uh, researching uh, interests. Okay, if you understand, okay. can uh, our uh, uh, researcher uh, uh, make a contact with you if uh, uh, they are interesting in some uh, topics that you have presented uh, today. Of course, of course, they are always welcome. So they can just turn to Thank me. You. Thank you uh, very much. So uh, now we can make uh, a five, uh, five minutes uh, uh, break. And in uh, 
1930, uh, we uh, continue uh, to the first uh, uh, session of uh, our uh, today uh, program. So let's make a little break. Можем да направим малка пауза. Пауза.